Breaking news, breaking news. Marcus Conti reporting on the Caesar Altiare Seac case. The Patsy Bomber has, uh, has some news, right? So um, a few days ago, November 15th, 2018, he pleaded not guilty. Not guilty. Let's figure out what that means. So there's a lot going on here. I want to read uh, some of the some of the background and then uh, talk about uh, the judge. Talk about uh, the significance of a not guilty plea. What that what that actually means. So let me let me just read the uh, the facts. And so I'm reading mostly from uh, it, it. It was widely published, so it's accurate. I was not in the courtroom, but I I was. Uh, I'm, it's widely uh, reported that, um, let me just read. So uh, NBC, New York Times, uh, Time Magazine, not New York Times, Time Magazine. The man suspected of mailing 16 bombs to critics of Donald Trump in October pleaded not guilty in court on Thursday. He said nothing. He spoke through his attorney. That's normal. Florida resident Caesar Sayok, 56, faces life in prison after a federal grand jury in New York indicted him on 30 charges for mailing bombs to President Bombs, to President Barack Obama, Vice President Joe Biden, billionaire George Soros, Hillary Clinton, former CIA director John Brannon, actor Robert De Niro, and James Clapper. None of the bombs exploded. Let's take a, take a stroll down memory lane. You gotta give him his day. We, we may do a few acts for you, like speech, flash, take it a bath. Lighten up on the backstroke. Rubber ducky, you're the one. You make every day so much fun. Poor guy. Fly from City Out Beach, Fly away. Every day is paradise. And every day for you guys is mountain men. Did he do it? I don't know, man. So, um, federal officials, officials, the scope of the grand jury was limited to those received in the New York event that heightened tensions uh, before the critical midterm elections. So, so the scope of the uh, the bombings is, is going to be limited to just the ones received in New York. Sayak was arrested on October 26th in plant, uh, Plantation, Florida, outside an auto, party, auto parts store. He had been living in a van covered with stickers of Trump and showed images of some of President's opponents with crosshairs over their faces. And then, transport, then he was transported to New York to be detained pending his trial. When's his trial? Ah, we have a date. So it's July 15th. I'm sorry. It's uh, July 2019, right? And why is that important? Because it, it falls it falls right into the right into the beginning of the 2000 to 2020 presidential run. July. That's when all the shit starts, right? So you're gonna have this trial. Right, we'll talk more about that. So Sayak was arrested. Blah 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 on 30 counts. Listen to the 30 counts. This is pretty interesting. The 30 counts Sayak was indicted on included use of a weapon of mass destruction, interstate transportation, and receipt, receipt of an explosive, threatening interstate communications, illegal mailing of an explosive, use of an explosive to commit a felony, and use of a destructive device during and in furtherance of a crime of violence. Right? So... The, here's where it gets really interesting. This is what I wanted to talk about. Assistant U.S. Attorney Emil Bov told Judge, we got a judge's name, Judge Jed Rakoff. <laughs> You're going to have some fun saying that guy's name. Jed Rakoff. Hey, Rakoff. <laughs> that the government needs time for discovery, which includes canvassing for surveillance video from various post offices around the country. Let me read that one more time. They need, the government needs time for discovery, which includes canvassing for surveillance video from various post offices around the country. I thought they had it. I thought, I thought there was evidence. Where's the evidence? They had evidence, right? Right? And then they, didn't they have a, 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 didn't they say that they had a, a, a confession of guilt? 
but the guy just said he's not guilty and that there is no, they've never stacked any evidence against him from the post office. That's very revealing, that line. So, um, U.S. District Attorney Judge Jed Jackoff set a July 15th, 2019 trial date. I was right about that. July 15th, 2019 trial date. The judge suggested earlier dates, but Sayoc's attorney said they needed more time to prepare, prepare given the amount of discovery in the case and a lack of staffing of federal public defenders. <sighs> federal defenders named Sarah Baumgartel. Baumgartel. So it's the same. It's still the same woman. She's He's still represented by the federal defender, public defender. Federal prosecutors said authorities are still scouring surveillance video from U.S. Postal Service and lining up experts to examine the explosive devices. Excuse me. But what's the evidence that... I thought they had in incredible evidence to hold him without bail, Right? Because of the severity of the crime, but we we still they still are not saying that they have any evidence. They they're saying that they need to go get the evidence. That's very revealing. Also, in their reporting again, Sayok's mother said in a recent letter to ABC News, her son grapples with mental illness. Again, the mental illness flag. Through though she didn't provide any further details about his condition, but it's not clear whether Sayok's attorney intend to raise that defense in court they should all right so let's look at the judge so that's that's the case we now know that there is a trial pending uh for C caesar altare sayak and that there is no admission of guilt because if there's an admission of guilt and he's pleading not guilty then what that doesn't make sense all right so we're furthering the ball on this there is no there's no significant evidence thus far discovery means that they're going to go out and discover the evidence basically. Right. Let's look at the judge. Judge, this is uh, Rakoff, Jad Rakoff. On October 11, 1995, Rakoff was nominated by President Bill Clinton <laughs> to fill a seat on the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York. <laughs> Just a coincidence, right? It's fucking Clinton. Right. So you talk about like, like, uh, Conflict. You remember conflict of interest? You remember when, when we used to consider conflict of interest? Like a guy, you know, a judge would <clears throat> recluse himself from a, from a case because he had a conflict of interest. Now, the 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 woman who's a, who allegedly a bomb was sent to Hillary Clinton, her husband appointed the judge who's now going to preside over the case. Oh, it's so fucking wonderful, right? Ah, you can't you can't make it up. He was confirmed by the Senate on December 29th, 1995. This is Jad Rakoff. 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 Imagine growing up as a teenager with a name like Rakoff. Hey, Rakoff. Fucking Rakoff. Give me a fucking Rakoff. Fucking you, fucking nookie Rakoff. It's Jewish, too. Jewish Rakoff. Hey, go ahead, fucking two boy fucking Rakoff. Give me a nookie. On December 31st, 2010, he assumed senior status, although he continues to take the full load of cases. Judge Rakoff is Jewish. Now, I want to look at a couple of cases because who is the guy? The guy has a, a stellar, uh, has, a, has a very extensive uh, judging record here in New York in the Southern District, right? But what are his cases? He have a, you ever do anything about terrorism or bombing? No, it's all banking. Check this shit out, man. You fucking love this shit, man. Kathy's fucking blowing this shit up, man. He's fucking blowing his case up. So uh, I'm going to look at three cases, right? So this is this is Jackoff, I mean Rackoff uh, judging, right, <laughs> on three, three separate uh, occasions. So on August 3rd, 2009, he was the, the judge in um, SEC versus Bank of America, right? The guy's got dirty, guy's got blood money all over him, right? Listen to this. On August 3rd, 2009, Bank of America agreed to pay $33 million in fines without admission of denial of charges to the U.S. Uh, Security and Exchange Commission, SEC, over non-disclosure of an agreement to pay up to $5.8 billion dollars of bonuses at Merrill Lynch. So they, 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 they 
Bank of America paid thirty three million, but they they were allegedly laundering five point eight billion dollars. What did how did J Judge Jackoff approve? Judge Rakoff approved the deal. Washington Post columnist Stephen Perlstein commented approvingly. <laughs> Maybe Rakoff is exactly the kind of activist judge we need more of. That's one case. All right, so he, he sided with the banks. Ding, ding. Clinton. Ding, ding. Security Exchange Commission versus another case with the SEC versus Citigroup. This is all around the the 2008-2009 financial debacle. It's important because you have to know the character. Let's know the character of the judge. Why was Sayoc sent to the Southern District of New York, right, to face trial, right? Why was he sent here, right? Why was he sent to the Kangaroo Court in, in, in New York? Where does it, how does it, because it's a political hit, right? It's a political hit on Trump, right? And now you've got the 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 uh, Clinton appointed judge judging him in New York. Let's look at the second case. The judge, this is Securities Exchange Commission versus Citigroup. The judge said that he could not determine whether the agency's settlement with Citigroup was fair, reasonable, right? Right. It, this in this case, he actually sides with Citigroup. Rakoff wrote. Allowing defendants to enter into consent judgments without admitting or denying the underlying allegations deprives the court of even the most minimal assurance that the sub sub substantial injunctive relief it is being asked to impose has any basis in fact. So there's Rakoff agreeing with the SEC against Citigroup. Right. Did anybody go to jail? <laughs> Hell no. It's it's just bullshit, right? So he's he's heavily involved with Bank of America, two point two billion dollar market cap, Citigroup, two and a half billion dollar market cap. What else? This is this is my favorite right here. So United States versus Gupta. Remember this one? I remember this one. Right in two thousand twelve. This is like right right after the um, right after. Uh, 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 Occupy Wall Street, right? And, uh, so in 2012, Judge Rakoff presented over the landmark insider trading trial of Rajat Rapta, <laughs> one of the most prominent business executives to have been tried and convicted in recent decades. Rapta, the former uh, managing partner for McKinsey, served as a director on the board of many major American businesses, including Goldman Sachs and Procter & Gamble. Right, so... This was an inside and trader gig. Well, let's see how the judge, because that's all we're concerned about, how did the judge rule? At trial, prosecutors showed that Grap Grapta, at the height of the financial crisis, leaked information about Warren Buffett's $5 billion investment to Goldman Sachs to his friend, hedge fund billionaire Rajay Raja Jajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajaj
So just to recap, what are we talking about here? We have a we have a uh, we have a case of a Patsy bomber, right? That that he's not he has not pleaded guilty to anything. There's no record of any testimony that we know of. There was just hearsay that now turns out to be bullshit. That there is no testimony of guilt. A trial date set for July 15th, 2019, leading into the 2020 election, right? That's just when the Democratic primary starts to heat up. All right, so you can expect this case to be used as fodder leading into the election, right? Now, does it, does it ever go to trial? I don't know. We shall see. Discovery is going to be very interesting here where... He's in, if he says not guilty, that means that the prosecution now has to line up their evidence. And, uh, you know, and they're only saying that they're still holding to that they got one fingerprint that was sent to uh, Maxine Waters and allegedly DNA. But again, that could be fudged, right? How does, how does somebody's fingerprint end up on a piece of tape and in a mailbox? Right? But there's still no, they've provided no significant evidence. And now we learn that the FBI has no significant evidence by their own testimony that they're now they're now out um, uh, canvassing for that evidence at the post the postal uh, department. So uh, it's very it's very interesting very interesting breaking story. So Cesar uh, Terry Sayak will sit in jail now until July 19, 2018, 19, until 2019. I still haven't received a, a response for the letter I sent him, but we'll keep keep our fingers crossed. Marcus Conti reporting.